Live from WTVO Rockford and your home team, Eyewitness News at 5 starts now. A disaster declaration to be issued in the state line's largest county. The action inspires some community members to roll up their sleeves. If you've had to fill up your gas tank lately, you know how pricey it can be. A local woman says expenses are adding up fast. And if a puppy or kitten is on your child's Christmas list, consider where you buy a furry friend. Fake listings online leave would-be pet owners out of luck. Good evening, I'm Mimi Murphy. Eric is off tonight. A disaster declaration has been issued across Winnebago County after a recent spike in local COVID hospitalizations. This means emergency treatments will be available to those in need. Michelle Rave spoke with some people who just got their COVID shot. And Michelle, they say they don't want to make matters worse for health care workers. Yes, Mimi, I spoke with local community members who tell me they're doing everything in their power and they hope by doing their part, those numbers will turn around. What are you doing here today? Uh, I got my vaccine. Five-year-old August was just one of several Winnebago County residents who attended the Winnebago County Health Department's COVID-19 vaccine clinic at Cherry Valley Elementary Thursday. So August has a respiratory condition. His airways are overreactive. So this has been something we've been waiting for to help protect him, keep him safe. And so he can be around family and his friends and be a kid. Earlier in the day, Winnebago County Board Chairman Joe Shirelli issued a disaster proclamation in response to rising COVID-19 numbers. The move came at the request of the County Health Department. In a statement, the department said it's working to help local hospitals provide monoclonal antibody treatments for those infected with COVID. It's scary. It kind of reminds you of the beginning of everything when everything was starting to shut down. My job was closed for two months. Um, just the uncertainty of everything. Registered nurse Crystal Johnson also rolled up her sleeve and says seeing the numbers continue to climb is frustrating. And people don't think it's important, especially around the holidays. They want to get together with their families and the spike has gone up since Thanksgiving. So it's, it's hard. They can wear their masks not touch their face, wash their hands, um, remain the six feet distance, get their boosters, vaccines. It's very important. It's preventable. Sometimes you just have to take a leap of faith and do what you think is best to protect your family. The disaster proclamation is in effect for seven days. To extend it any further, it would need to be approved by the full county board. Mimi. All right, thanks, Michelle. A longtime GOP senator and presidential nominee is honored in a Capitol tribute. A ceremony highlighted the life of Bob Dole at the Capitol Rotunda today. President Joe Biden and other lawmakers spoke to Dole's achievements. Biden called the late senator, quote, a giant of our history. Senator Dole died Sunday at the age of 98. His funeral will be held Friday at the Washington National Cathedral. Jurors in the Jussie Smollett trial reach a verdict. It's expected to be read sometime this evening. The panel of six men and six women will decide whether the former Empire star is guilty of six felony counts for allegedly staging a fake hate crime and falsely reporting it to police. Smollett took the stand earlier this week and repeatedly denied the attack was fake. But the prosecution told jurors Smollett lied to them while testifying. That's what their argument boils down to, that he was a victim. He's going to sink because that jury should do the right thing. Find him guilty. Smollett faces up to three years behind bars. If the jury returns with a guilty verdict, legal experts say it's likely the defense will appeal. Lawmakers from both sides of the aisle are taking on big tech. The House and Senate held hearings today. Some believe Congress and other federal agencies need more power to hold the companies accountable. Anna Warnicke is in Washington with more as she keeps you connected to the nation's capital. Big tech watchdogs say even if you're mindlessly scrolling, every post that pops up in your social media feed is calculated to target you. This means that on platforms like Instagram and TikTok, teens interested in dieting will be barraged with content promoting eating disorders. 
and a depressed user will be shown content promoting self-harm. And Josh Golan with the nonprofit Fair Play says it's not just teens that are targeted. They addict users like a narcotic. Jonathan Greenblatt with the Anti-Defamation League told Congress on Thursday that big tech companies are profiting off the hate speech and conspiracy theories circulating on their platforms. Because if it bleeds, it leads and it feeds their business model. In two separate hearings in both the House and the Senate, Democrats and Republicans agreed that self-governing isn't an option. They say that Congress needs to hold big tech companies accountable. We need more public transparency that allows for meaningful public oversight and discourse over the true impact these platforms have on our daily lives. And South Dakota Republican Senator John Thune says Congress needs to take control of these platforms before they control us. There's a growing concern that large technology platforms may one day know every individual even better than we know ourselves. Lawmakers say one step would be to expand the Federal Trade Commission's authority to go after big tech companies. In Washington, I'm Anna Warnicke. A warning for anyone planning on giving a pet as a Christmas gift. Dog sales increased during the holidays with many families purchasing the pets online. And consumer advocates say scammers have noticed. The Better Business Bureau says crooks set up phony websites prompting unsuspecting buyers to hand over thousands of dollars for puppies that don't exist. According to the BBB, the demographic falling victim to these traps is surprising. Often we think of senior citizens as being individuals who fall victim to um, uh, scams. But these 24 to uh, 25 to 44 year olds are, the, are more often than not the victims here and they're losing um, well over $1,000. Red flags to look out for include not being allowed to meet the puppy before buying, a seller who doesn't want to talk on the phone, and advertisements for purebreds at deeply discounted prices. A pair of Rockford High School seniors will have a little less to worry about as they pack up for college next fall. Anju Griffith and Kayla Bonsai have been named QuestBridge College Match Scholarship recipients. This means they'll get a full ride to the university of their choice with funds covering tuition, room and board, books, even travel. Anju's planning to attend Stanford and Caleb will head to Boston College. The duo was selected out of more than 1,600 applicants. Meanwhile, Boylan Catholic High School students are getting into the spirit of giving. Student council members raised over $7,500 to buy gift baskets for local families in need. Packages will go to St. Elizabeth Community Center and are filled with groceries and gift cards. The donation means more than 230 people will have meals and presents this Christmas. Donating the baskets has been a Boylan tradition for 50 years. High gas prices this holiday season have many drivers feeling pressure at the pump. Nicole Delgado spoke with a Winnebago County mom who says it's not just filling up that's giving her headaches. Nicole? That's right, Mimi. The prices are going up everywhere and people are trying to cut back anywhere they can. Money nowadays is so hard just to be able to go out and you know, my son wants to come with me and I don't want to bring him into a store because I, I can't afford to buy him those little extra things. Teresa Gibbons says with inflation drives prices up. She and her family are trying to be strategic about everything they buy and use, especially driving. You know, I live in Roscoe, so if we go into Rockford, let's make going to Rockford and do what we have to do, you know, all the same day. Carpooling to work and school, making a family calendar to schedule everything in one one trip are some of the changes the Gibbons family has made. It's crazy. I just put $36 in the gas tank and that didn't even fill it up. You know, so and then you try and make it last for at least a week. <laughs> Counting every penny that comes and goes and only buying what you need is a challenge for everyone this time of year. You try and use less of everything so you don't have you know, to go out and buy it. Um, and gas, I try not to have to go anywhere. Coming up at 6, we hear from an expert about these gas prices, inflation rates, and what is to come. Mimi? All right, thanks, Nicole. Now, your first worn weather forecast from Chief Meteorologist Candace King. 
Well, our day was filled with plenty of cloud cover this afternoon, but we are now starting to see some of that clear out. A live look with our Mercy Sky Track camera now out over downtown Rockford. We'll continue to see our skies clear here as we go through the rest of this evening. This will actually allow our temperatures to drop back on either side of that 30 degree mark. Good news, our winds, we had some gusty winds earlier today from the south. Those winds will continue to subside. One storm system passing here to our north earlier today. Drier air. We didn't see a lot of rain, snow, or even that mix that we thought maybe we would see here early this morning. Did see some lighter snow up to the north of us, but the focus now kind of shifts a little more to our west as our next storm system. This one, a strong one, going to move out of the Rockies across the Midwest into the Great Lakes and bring us mostly rainfall as we go through the afternoon tomorrow, but to the north, some half snow where snowfall totals could climb over half a foot of snow, even reach close to a foot of snowfall uh, during the afternoon and evening. The track of that low pressure system takes it out of the Rockies through the panhandle of Oklahoma into northwest Missouri and then eventually out into northern Michigan once we get into Friday evening. This low pressure system is really going to strengthen, so that means a period of some pretty gusty winds, especially late tomorrow night and during the first First half of the day on Saturday. You see where that heavy snow axis lies across the plains into the upper Midwest and Great Lakes. For us, it's the warmer side of this that we deal with, although we could see some snow on the back side once we get into Saturday morning and early Saturday afternoon. Winter storm warnings, winter weather advisories in effect. So if your travel plans take you up to the north here this weekend or you know anybody up to the north, they're going to be dealing with quite a bit of snowfall. So let's put this all together because it's kind of a complex system. Again, mostly for us, it is going to be rainfall, at least during the day tomorrow. We've got some clearing that takes place this evening, so we'll keep it a partly cloudy sky. Early tomorrow, you might be able to see some sunshine, but as that warmer air comes in out ahead of that low, we bring back that cloud cover, and I wouldn't even be surprised if we actually see some fog develop too during a time tomorrow afternoon and tomorrow evening. Now, through about noon, we are going to stay dry. Once we get into the afternoon, some light rain showers will start to pick up up as that warm front begins to near. Could see a period of some moderate to maybe even pockets of some heavier rain come down late tomorrow afternoon and then through the evening tomorrow. Clap of thunder or two not completely ruled out. I think that might be a little more focused to our south and southeast, but towards tomorrow evening as that low level jet picks up, again, we might hear a rumble of thunder or two with that. Those rain showers, they will stay with us through about midnight. Once we get after midnight, cold front comes in. Colder air wraps in on the back side of that. We'll see uh, the rain showers start to come to an end, but as that cold air mixes in, we'll start to see some snow develop. This is going to be light. Some minor accumulations are possible, especially on the grassy surfaces uh, as we go through Saturday morning. On the back side, though, bigger story likely going to be the wind. Wind will be coming in from the northwest, could be gusting as high as 45 to even 50 miles per hour. So it is going to be a very windy day on Saturday. We'll start to clear things out by Saturday afternoon. High pressure builds in once we get into the day on Sunday. Temperatures right now sit in the low 40s for us. 42 for our weather watcher Bob here in the southeast end of Rockford. Man up in South Beloit also checking in with 40 degrees. Tonight that temperature drops down to 29 here in Rockford. Underneath that partly cloudy sky, we'll see that number climb into the 40s. Wind will start to pick up tomorrow afternoon right around 44, 31, for our low tomorrow night, 36 once we head into Saturday. Again, remember it's going to be windy, so Sunday our pick day out of the weekend. Temperatures then, Mimi, are going to climb into next week. We could see the 60s, which would break a record for us next Wednesday, but if we get more cloud cover and that snow to the north slowing down that warm front, that might keep us from reaching the potential mid and upper 60s by middle of next week. Thanks, Candace. Now, the Napleton Sports Desk with David Greenberg. Heading into Sunday night's contest between the Bears and Packers, marking the 204th time these two teams have played each other, Bears have way more on the line to lose. Don't think I'm taking much of a liberty in saying that I predict the Packers to pick up their 10th win of the season Sunday night. Yesterday, Matt Nagy said Justin Fields will return as the starter for Sunday night's game, and in my opinion, this is a big time gamble. Bears are already in a bad spot at 4-8. and eight. Fields, while showing flashes of greatness this season, has understandably looked like a rookie at times. My question is, would it be better to have him sit out one more game, take your loss with Andy Dalton or Nick Foles at quarterback, and have Fields rest up for another week? I understand the idea that maybe you wanted to play in Lambeau, get a feel for the environment. 
But Fields has played in some tough games while in college. Like I said, this is a big gamble from Nagy. Not only could they risk Fields getting re-injured, but if they suffer an embarrassing loss in front of a national audience where Fields and the offense don't play well, it could really affect the perception of him as a future franchise quarterback. Week 14 kicks off tonight on our sister station Fox 39. The Minnesota Vikings will take on the Pittsburgh Steelers. Kickoff is set for 7-20. In some local area football news, Rockford University has announced the promotion of Calvin Tolliver to head coach after the recent departure of J.T. Zimmerman. In his first full season as offensive coordinator with the Regents, Tolliver helped the offense flourish, scoring 30 or more points six times and scoring 40 or more points per game four times. Both ranked first in the school's history since joining the NACC in 2008. Coming up tonight at 6, the Blackhawks look to get back on track up in Montreal as they face the Canadians. Things have been much better since, Der since head coach Derek King took over. and He says he's still adjusting to the business side of the NHL versus the development side of the AHL. I could have 30 players in our system at once, so I try to rotate guys in and out, make sure they get their ice time, make sure that here it's, you know, it's a business, right? you you got to win hockey games. Uh, you you got to try to still give guys opportunities, but... It's about winning hockey games. Puck drops at 6 p.m. That's sports. We'll be right back. Candace will have a final look at weather in just a moment. But first, here's a look at what's to come on News Nation tonight. Russia versus Ukraine. Is this the next Cuban Missile Crisis? Combat veteran and Congressman Mark Green talks strategy and what President Biden can do. Plus, the GOP struggles with a Trump problem. That's on balance. Here's Dan Abrams. Thanks, Leland. Tonight on Dan Abrams Live on News Nation. A white Texas man shoots and kills a white cop standing outside his home. The jury saw it as an open and shut case of self defense. I wonder why almost no one is covering it. That's tonight on Dan Abrams Live. That's all coming up tonight on the fastest growing cable news network in America, News Nation. It's available on the cable and satellite stations you see here, or you can head to newsnation.com. The first Warren Interactive Radar, right on mystateline.com, gets a little more active during the afternoon and evening tomorrow. For us, though, stays fairly quiet. Temperatures tonight down around 29 degrees. Skies underneath, uh, we should stay partly cloudy, I should say, tonight. Increasing cloud cover during the day tomorrow. We are dry through about noon. Once we get closer to about 2, 3 o'clock, we'll start to see some rain come in. Could be some heavier pockets, maybe with a rumble of thunder, especially to the south. Some wind whipped snow showers moving around on Saturday. Warming up, though, by next week. Candace, and thanks for watching. Have a good night.